Hello everyone and welcome in this uh, overview of uh, React 16. Um, it came out yesterday. Uh, it's everyone can use it now. It's not in beta anymore, and it's it has a bunch of cool features uh, that we're gonna go over now. Uh, so in Re in React 15 or previous versions, uh, as a matter of fact, if you wanted to return uh, multiple elements from a single component, you had to wrap them in something like a div, for example. Well, that's not true in React 16 anymore. You can just return an array of components. So for example, we can just uh, remove this div and wrap our element in, uh, in an array instead. Uh, so we'll do this and then, and then let's format this. Uh, we're gonna have a hunter here and then just let uh, WebStorm do its thing. Um, so now we have, uh, we have our component that just returns both the elements we wanted, but not the div. And if we open our elements here, uh, we can see that we only have the header and the p, and then they're not wrapped in an under div, and that's pretty cool. Uh, but we can see that we have an error here. Uh, React is complaining because we didn't provide keys for those elements. So that's still the same thing as in uh, previous versions of React. You have to give a key to each element of an array. So we'll do that. Uh, this will be the header, and this will be the intro. Uh, intro. It's save, reload, and we can see that we have no errors anymore. Uh, cool. So the other thing I want to tell you about is the fact that now you can just uh, return strings from your uh, React elements instead of uh, wrapping your string in a span, for example. So let's remove this uh, and wrap that whole thing uh, inside uh, backticks. And now uh, we hit save. And we can see that the app, the app still works uh, just fine. And uh, actually, since we are not using JS6 anymore, we don't even need to import React. Uh, we can just save, reload, and that's pretty cool, hey? Eh? Uh, if we look at the elements, uh, our hello Antonio, it's just there inside a P, and we didn't have to wrap it in a spanner or anything. So yeah, no added markup. That's pretty cool. Uh, the next thing I want to tell you about is component did catch. So uh, component did catch allows you to uh, handle errors in your React components. So let's say uh, we have uh, fetch method here, uh, fetch from remote, uh, and when we call it, it's gonna uh, call some uh, some API, and then it go it's gonna receive uh, a new uh, data object, uh, which will be uh, null because we had an error, and then it's gonna call this that set state with, and give it uh, our data object. Okay, so if we uh, if we use this method, uh, so let's say we have a button uh, on a click, it will do this dot uh, fetch from remote, uh, fetch, and we press that button. So it's gonna fetch the data from the remote server. Our app is gonna crash because uh, it's gonna try to read name uh, from a null object, uh, that doesn't work but we don't want our user to see that uh, or ju the app just to crash. We don't want that, okay? So uh, what we're gonna do is use something called component did catch. So component did catch uh, takes error and info, okay? Uh, and it's just a new lifecycle method available in all your uh, React class components. And we're gonna uh, have a error property in our state, uh, which is gonna be false by default, but when we catch, we're gonna do this.setState, uh, error, true, okay? Uh, and then you can, if you sentry or whatever, you can just uh, send, uh, send error log uh, info in this lifecycle method. But now in the, in the render method, we're gonna extract the error from the state. And if we have an error, we'll just return something went wrong, it's safe. And now when we press that button, we can see that uh, something went wrong. But because we're uh, in dev mode, 
uh, is going to still show us the error uh, instead of just showing us the, uh, the something went wrong thingy. Uh, but in production build, it doesn't do that anymore, uh, as I'm going to demonstrate uh, now. So we'll do uh, yarn build and then live server of build. Okay, uh, we'll do that. Okay, it's it built the app, and now if we uh, set data to nil, we just have an error happened uh, showing on the screen for the user instead of having the app crashing. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you wanna uh, so you you wanna build like a error boundary uh, component, and then you just wrap your whole entire app inside of it, or you just wrap it around widgets if you want. I mean, there's multiple ways to do it. It's fine. And another cool feature, another cool feature is the fact that now you can return a custom uh, attribute on your elements. So let's say uh, I want uh, to have my custom uh, custom ID set to 42. Um, well, in React 15, it will just ignore that, uh, give you an error in the console and not pass it to the, to the element, but in React 16, as you can see, my P still has the my custom ID uh, on its attribute. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, I hope you guys learned something. Uh, if you have any other uh, exciting React 16 features, just tweet me or respond to this video or whatever. So yeah, see you next time.